Yo, what's going on guys? Bobby here. And today we're going to be talking about the balance changes that happened today. So these are going to be the final balance changes until world finals. So I wanted to let you guys know from a pro's perspective how this is going to change up the meta. So a little disclaimer that sometimes the balances do change right before they come out. So if one or two of the things I say is incorrect, that's probably why I'm obviously recording a day early. And if it's not the same, well, it got tweaked or changed last minute. So first up, we're going to talk about Mo. So Mo's nerf is that the super is going to be reduced by 25%. So this is actually really important because Mo is really annoying, but the super is what makes it over the top. So if Mo is getting a quarter less supers throughout a game, that is really game changing and it's going to make Mo a lot more beatable. The only thing that Mo isn't great at is when there's just too much HP for him to deal with. The super kind of makes that go away. But if you're not getting your super as often, I would definitely say high HP brawlers are going to be pretty good into Mo. Now, obviously, the rat is still going to be a super good brawler. But is he going to be a first pick in drafts? Is he going to be something that you have to ban? I'm not so sure anymore. Next up, we have Squeak. And Squeak's main attack got a 10% damage buff. Now, this is a really good buff. Squeak just needed something a little bit more to make him better. Squeak is typically in draft a really good last pick. If you're facing squishy brawlers like Gus or B or Bell or Piper, but the map isn't a long range bounty map like Shooting Star, for example. If you get three good matchups on Squeak, he's supposed to punish the enemies. But in this current meta that we have right now, it just seems like Squeak isn't that good. So this 10% damage buff is definitely going to help him out which he definitely needs. And the fact that he has a hypercharge, he should be able to creep back into the meta, I think, with this buff. Next up, we have a Meg nerf. And Meg supercharge, just like Moe's, is going to be reduced by 25%. Now, this is only in the basic form, which means if you're in the little Meg, it's still going to take the exact same amount of shots to get your super. But this is a big deal for Meg because Meg already got a couple nerfs and she is very kind of fast falling out of the meta. Now, the reason Meg keeps getting nerfs is because she's a very easy brawler to play. She essentially has two lives. You don't have to aim and it's just super, super, super easy to play. I mean, come on. And at the lower trophies, Meg is just unreal. So even though she's not so good at the very top of the meta, she is still dominating the lower tier of Brawl Stars and they need to nerf her ASAP. Now, next up, we have Gale. So Gale has two nerfs. The super damage is going down by 20% and the hypercharge rate is also going down by 10%. So Gale might have the best hypercharge in the game. You can very easily team wipe a squad with Gale's hypercharge and you don't even need to counter. I mean, Gale is just absolutely unreal. So I do like that you're nerfing the super damage here because obviously... Once you get that super, if you have the star power that stuns them when they hit the wall, it's basically like an automatic kill. And maybe with the super damage nerf, it's going to be taken down. As well as the hypercharge rate, it feels like no matter what, when you have a Gale hypercharge, you automatically have a team wipe, two kills, or at the very minimum, at least one kill that's absolutely free. So I like the fact that they're toning it back and not letting you get two Gale hypercharges a game. And hopefully sometimes you won't even get one if it's a bad pick. Next up, we're buffing Willow. And this is a little bit hard to describe. It just says easier to hit super. But it, I guess that means it's either going to be bigger or it's going to be moving faster. But Willow's a really good anti-tank thrower. And I like that she has her own unique style. The super is really interesting and you can make a lot of cool carry plays specifically in Brawl Ball with it. So I do like that the super is going to be easier to hit. Hopefully it's not too easy because I think that can make Willow a very strong brawler. But to be honest, if this super is really going to be easier to hit and substantially easier, you guys are going to see Willow all across pro, pro play at the very top, including World Finals, because Willow is a very good anti-tank thrower, very good in draft. And if you can hit that super easier, she's going to be very dangerous. Next up, we have Penny. And I've been begging every single tier list for a Penny and Janet buff, and we finally got it. So Penny is getting a main attack range buff of 10%. So I don't know exactly what this is. I think this is a little bit more than half of a tile. And that's a pretty big difference that Penny's getting that range. Because if you hit someone, the coin splash also has extra range. And this is just kind of making Penny a lot more versatile. She's already kind of slowly crept back into the meta. So if this is enough, which I honestly think this little buff might be enough, I think she might be back and you're going to be seeing a lot more Penny soon. Next up is Chester. They are nerfing Chester's HP by 10%. I love this nerf. I think Chester's a really good brawler. I think the damage is the issue, but at the same time, Chester is supposed to be a brawler that does crazy damage. So if we're going to nerf something, I don't mind the fact that we're nerfing HP because let's let Chester be unique. Let's let Chester do a lot of damage and let's nerf something else rather than make what's supposed to make Chester great 
not so great. Next up, we have a Macy buff. Now, Macy is going to get a 10% attack damage buff. I feel like this is going to be useless. Like, that's not going to help Macy at all. I feel like she needs something for her gadget or for her super or for her super charge. But I don't want it to go back to three. They need to find a way to fix Macy where it's four shots for super, but she becomes good. I don't think the damage buff is going to do anything at all because still, you know, the supercharge and the gadget, it's just, it's just not going to work. But I guess it's a good start. Next up, we have Daryl and Daryl got a pretty big nerf. Reduce supercharge rate from basics by 25%. So this just means Daryl isn't going to charge super as easily. And honestly, that's great because Daryl is one of the best brawlers in the game. Just like Meg, just like Gale, let's get the be and Mo, you know, let's get the best brawlers in the game and let's nerf them because that's what you're supposed to do. So I like how they're attacking all the best brawlers in the game and nerfing them before Worlds. It's going to make everything really even and that's what you really love to see. Next up, we have a Kenji change. Now, there's literally nothing here. It doesn't say what's going to happen for Kenji, but... Knowing Kenji, I really hope that they nerf the gadget because the gadget is what makes Kenji so strong. The fact that you can go from 7,000 HP to 1 HP and then go all the way back up to like 6,000 or 5,000 or whatever the math is, is absolutely unreal. That is definitely the part about Kenji that needs to be changed. And I'm hoping it gets changed in this balance, not the next one. Kenji is still going to be a really good brawler, but Kenji isn't as good as you guys think he is. Mo is definitely a lot better of a brawler. And if they nerf this gadget, I think Kenji is very fast going to fall off. So that's going to be it for today. If you guys like this little summary about the balance changes, I don't mind doing it every time because it's a really easy video. And I hope it gives you a better point of view from at least a pro's perspective. But that's going to be it for me today. I'll catch you guys again soon. Peace.